What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool back here again for Practical Machinist. Today on Shop Talk, we're gonna be hopping into the threads on the forums on Practical Machinist website and finding some threads we found interesting. Before we get started, make sure you like and subscribe below if you wanna see more videos. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so the first one we're gonna get into today, and again, these are taken from the Practical Machinist form. I'm not gonna give you guys a big rundown on those again. You can see my opinions on the previous videos we've done on why you should hop on the Practical Machinist forums. I'll spare you that today. But the first one we're gonna go through was a conversation I found super, super interesting, um, only because it kind of stands at odds with you know some of the experiences I've had. And that question was, who proves, proves out programs in your shop? So this guy came on and asked the question, basically, when you make a program at your shop, who proves out the program? Basically, who runs it for the first time in the machine at your shop? The reason this was interesting was the implications it had and some of the further information this guy gave. So to put it succinctly, this guy was explaining the situation. At his shop, they are clearly a bigger shop because they have somebody whose full-time job is just to program. They have set up machinists who go through and actually you know, set up the machine, put all the tools in, put the vices in, load the program, and then they have operators who, you know, reload the machine, push the button, and actually do the production. So the question he was asking, because of the scenario, was basically what happens there is the programmer programs the program, gives it to the setup machinist. The setup machinist at his shop is the guy who runs that program for the first time. The problem he's having, or at least the problem he sees, is the setup machinist, so after the program comes down, so let's get a couple things straight here. The programmer does the cam. The cam is the actual programming in the machine with something like Mastercam or uh, Fusion 360 or Bobcad, whatever it may be. The programmer makes that cam program. They then post out the NC file. And for those of you who don't know, the NC file is the G code. That's what you put directly into the machine. So the setup machinist isn't getting the CAM program, they're getting the NC file. So when the machinist, the setup machinist is running the program, apparently they are making changes inside the NC file. They're changing the G code. Um, this is pretty common. You know, there's a lot of reasons why you need to change things at the machine. Um, you know, maybe your feed rates are too slow. Maybe you see somewhere where you can take out a few seconds. Um, Maybe it's a safety thing. Maybe you realize that the cam didn't, or didn't post out the NC file correctly. A lot of reasons why this can happen. But the issue this guy was seeing is after the setup machinist went through and made changes to the NC file, they're supposed to go save it back into the computer. So at a lot of shops, like my shop, we keep all our cam files and you know some NC files as our masters. So if I have to go run that job again, I can go grab it. The problem he was seeing was because the guy who programmed it is not the guy who changes it at the machine, he's worried about the incorrect files getting saved back and the kind of contingency of how that system works. There was a lively discussion on this. Um, you know, it really depends on what kind of shop you are. If you were a one-man show, you were probably the guy that proves out all your machines because I don't know who else would be doing it. Um, in a small shop like mine, it really varies, you know, um, the guy who programs it tends to prove it out. Very rarely do I or, you know, one of the supervisors give a program out to someone and just say, here, go, if they did it themselves. The consensus on the conversation that was there basically kind of echoed this. Um, generally, the guy who programs it should be the guy who runs it. The reason is that not only does that guy know what's going to happen, it's that they're responsible for it. Um, you know, you, you don't want to get in one of those contests where the programmer, you know, makes a program, gives it to a setup guy, the setup guy blindly runs it, and the machine crashes. Well, whose fault is it? Is it the setup guy's fault for not seeing it? Is it the programmer's fault for making the machine crash? It's, it's a scenario that no one likes to get into, and I personally find the personal accountability that comes from being the guy who, you programmed it, you run it, you make sure it works, it just keeps everything, you know, a little more even across the board. The reason this conversation got more interesting was people asked him, you know, well, why are the setup guys proving it out? Why is it not the programmers who do it? And he said, well, no, 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 no. Uh, we have one programmer. We have one guy who programs. And he didn't say how many setup guys there were, but he did say that they have 30 operators. I guess they have uh, 
an R&D side and a production side. And between the two, they have 30 operators and one programmer. I may have misinterpreted this, but other people were seeing it my way in that there's one guy in that shop who does all the programming. And that is gonna be red flag number one for me. Um, guys, there are people out there who are brilliant at programming. I know guys who could make machines do things that I can't imagine. Um, I've had the pleasure of working with a few over the years. They're amazing to have around. <clears throat> the issue becomes that if they have, my, my thought on it is that if they have 30 guys on the floor, one programmer and setup guys who are changing programs, why are the guys who are changing the programs not getting to do programming as well? Clearly if you can modify programs with G code in the NC file, you have ability and knowledge to know how to program. Um, very rarely would somebody be very good at NC and have zero experience with CAM. The reason why this becomes an issue as well is what if the programmer's off sick? What if somebody needs to go grab a file? What if somebody needs to change something? Um, it just opens it up for a lot of problems along the road. So number one, if you're in a scenario where you have one or two guys who are doing all the programming, you have to make sure you're getting other guys involved in that process in order to protect your company moving forward. What if that programmer quit? Um, I just saw that as a red flag. So if you were in a scenario like that at your shop, it always pays to diversify who's doing that kind of work. Um, the other thing that came up was, that I saw was the setup machinist is responsible for saving the NC file back in the machine, or back into the computer. The reason that's an issue for me and other people had this issue as well is, guys, unless you are absolutely brilliant at reading G code, it is very, very difficult to see what a program is doing if you have no idea what that program is for, just from the G code. So if somebody just grabbed, you know, one of the programs for our, our uh, parts that has, you know, a thousand lines of code in it, could I figure it out? Yes, but the, the amount of times I would miss something, you could throw 10 errors in there. And if I have no idea what this program is supposed to do, I don't have a drawing or whatever it may be, the chances of me catching all 10 are very, very slim. Um, there are guys out there that can do it for sure, but saving an NC file is helpful in some scenarios, but using it as your master of that file is not advisable. If you make, I make changes to my NC files all the time in the machine. The trick is though that you have to go back and change the cam afterwards. Because if somebody doesn't know and they just go grab the cam and they repost it, and you've changed a lot of stuff right in the machine, there's gonna be a big disconnect between the program that you had modified and the one in the cam. Um, so everybody else kind of agreed with this as well. You know, I'm not coming up with a radical opinion here. You should always use your cam files as your masters. Is that always feasible? Does it always work? No, but it really prevents, you know, someone grabbing the wrong file. Listen guys, one of the biggest things that will absolutely kill you if you let it in this industry is documentation. If you are not staying on top of what files are good, what files are bad, um, what rev level a file is for, making sure that you are getting rid of old drawings or at least sequestering them into an area where you say everything beyond this folder is old, you will get in problems. I've had it happen here, guys, where someone grabbed an old rev, rev level and ran 500 parts, and then, then we had to go back and try to fix them all. You don't want that scenario to happen, so taking steps early to mitigate that will help. I'd like to hear your uh, opinions on this below. Do you guys use NC files as masters? Um, who runs this, the first off? Who proves out the program in your shop, and why? Um, I think it's an interesting question because Although you'd think everyone would be pretty across the board on this, there was in there, so I'd love to hear what you guys think below. Okay, so this next thread that we pulled from Practical Machinist Forums, we'll link it here, it touches on the same kind of theme, and I found it really interesting because, you know, some of my opinions got challenged a little bit here, but it was a very, very interesting conversation, and I would say it is on par, you know, it's a hot topic, it's on par with the manual versus CNC debates that you always see on these kind of things. But a, the question was, a guy came on, I believe he was a teacher at a technical college, and he said that he has an issue right now. He teaches, uh, I believe it was first or second year engineering students, CNC. So basically he takes them, you know, we always talk about that we don't find, as guys who work on the floor with drawings from engineers, that engineers get enough time on the floor to really understand manufacturing. Well, at this school, that's exactly what they're doing. They take their engineering students, they put them in the shop, they teach them CNC, in order to give them a better grasp of you know, actual manufacturing processes and being able to design for them. So the problem he was having was that he has a module in his training that teaches them G-code. And he was finding that his engineering students 
just really didn't see the value in G-code. I, I think he said that they, they likened it to doing math without a calculator. Um, why bother learning how to do, you know, super long division or whatever it may be when you have a calculator in your pocket all the time. Um, he was basically throwing it out there like either A, what do I do to prove the importance of it? Or B, you know, is it important to know G code these days when there's, you know, such a prevalence of cam systems, you know, in a lot of machines, there's conversational programming now. Um, you know, what is the value of G code? And I braced myself because this is usually a real fun conversation. I've seen it happen a few times, but I was actually really impressed guys. It was a very, very level headed conversation. Um, there were obviously some very strong opinions there, but it kind of reflected what I thought as well. Um, they kind of range, you know, it, usually guys, this is either a black or white question for people. I tend to find people in the past anyway, have fallen into one of two camps. And that is either if you were using G code, you were a Neanderthal, there is no need for it in today, today's machining world. Um, use cam, that's what it's there for. Or on the other side, if you don't know, don't know how to program in G code, you are not a machinist. Um, these two opinions tend to clash. There is obviously uh, a lot of gray here, and I was glad to see a lot of those kind of grayer opinions come out rather than being you know fanatical on one side or the other. So the general consensus was, and I agreed with this as well, is you have to understand what G code is in, under, in order to understand this question. <clears throat> and for those of you who don't know, I know we touched on a little bit on the last one, but G code are the actual you know codes and the G positions, um, the coordinates, the macros, the M codes, whatever it may be for what kind of language you're using. You know, different machines have little things you have to modify for them, and different calls. But it is the actual raw code that your cam spits out. And at one point, guys, I guarantee that most things were done straight cam or cat, uh, straight G code into the machine. Some places still do this. And the question was, if you don't know how to do that, basically, are you a real machinist? Uh, that's kind of what guys were saying. So those of you who don't know what G code is. That's what we're talking about. Um, I agreed with the main point there that G code, because it is, you know, a code is basically a language and it is a language of programming. If you don't know how to speak it, you should definitely know how to understand it. Uh, meaning I personally don't think that there is any value to being able to go through and do 100% of your programming straight into the machine. I don't see a point for it anymore. A lot of guys there actually had this same opinion, which I was surprised by. Um, I don't think that there is a lot of value in spending a whole lot of time learning how to program straight G code. Unless you were doing something like a straight turning lathe where some guys still do that today, it may be faster to go and type in, just bang out your code right into the machine. When it comes to complex parts these days, it's not that there's no place for it, but there's just no point in spending the time to do that when you can do it much faster and more accurately with less room for error in a CAM program. You gotta remember guys, I don't know about you, but I got fat fingers. Every time you're touching a G code into that machine, every time you're hitting a key, there is room for error. That post processor you use in a CAM program is a lot less prone to error than your fat fingers. Um, you know, there's exceptions to every rule. Do CAM programs have mistakes? For sure, your post processor may not be completely coordinated properly, you may need to do things in the G code, but knowing how to use it and being able to program in it straight are two very different things. Um, the reasons why you may need to know how to program in G code or where it does come in handy is being able to go out and find mistakes. Um, you know, maybe someone else has gone and modified G code like that last one we were talking about. They've gone and actually changed the NC file. Being able to see what they've done and see if they've made an error, that's important. Another one is being able to optimize. You know, this kind of goes at odds a little bit with the last one we were talking about, where I said, you know, never save an NC file. Sometimes guys, your post processor may not be formatted completely correctly. You may not know how to change it. You may need to do something on the fly. Being able to go and just modify your NC file, you know, put a machine into rapid or, you know, program a quick macro to save some time. That is very helpful. The last one guys is, you know, I like to think about nice scenarios where all you guys have fantastic CAM programs. Everybody has the latest version of MasterCAM. It's not always going to be the case. Um, some of you guys are using very old CAM software through no fault of your own. Um, maybe you, your shop just doesn't want to pay for it. You know, we can't always work the best jobs that we want to have. Sometimes you got to deal with some things. Maybe you need to go through and change G code. And you know what guys, maybe you're not in that scenario now, 
but maybe the next shop will be like that. So knowing how to go through and change things in G-Code is helpful. Um, like I said, guys, it was nice to not see a blunt. If you do not know G-Code, you're not a machinist in this. I hope that attitude keeps going forward because you know, there is a place for it, but we are not living in an area where, or in a time where you need to know G-Code 100%. Um, I'd like to hear your opinions below. Do you guys program in G-Code? How often do you use it? Um, I definitely think you should know it. What do you guys think? Make sure you comment below so we can take a look. That's gonna sum it up for today, guys. Um, thank you very much for watching as always. Make sure you like and subscribe if you wanna see more videos below. You take care.